Chairman Markey, Ranking Member Sensenberger, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today about energy use, buildings, and the opportunities to <clears> reduce <throat> our impacts from buildings on our climate change. My name is Kent Peterson, and I am the current volunteer president of the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers, better known as ASHRAE. We were founded in 1894, and ASHRAE is an international technical society with over 50,000 members in 140 countries. Our members really represent the breadth of technical professionals in the building industry, from building designers to building owners to manufacturers and building operators. You know, ASHRAE fulfills our mission by advancing heating, ventilating, and air conditioning and refrigeration technologies to serve humanity and promote a more sustainable future. Through not only our research, but our standards writing processes, our publications, and our continuing ed education programs. But turning our attention on today's topic, with increased energy cost and climate change considerations, design guidance related to energy efficiency is more important than ever. Nowhere is it more important than in the building industry, given that buildings do consume roughly 40% of the primary energy in the United States. Today, building energy efficiency still represents a vast and underutilized energy resource within the United States. Building energy efficiency is the single most important opportunity for reducing global greenhouse gas emissions. In my opinion, today's buildings mortgage our energy and environmental future. In the past, our industry really focused more on the minimum energy efficiency requirements. But today, we're really focusing beyond minimum energy efficiency requirements. Into green buildings, what are the requirements for people that want to build buildings that perform much better than the minimum requirements required by code? Given the concerns regarding climate change, our industry really is ongoing, undergoing a market transformation. It's going to change the way that buildings are designed, built, and operated. In the past, we have been able to provide comfortable, healthy, and safe buildings. But on the flip side, it's the energy consumed by these buildings that's helping fuel this new crisis. And it's a crisis of global energy availability. And it certainly is impacting us in the United States. Unfortunately, the energy consumed by these buildings is starting to increase. In May of, or May of 2007, it was the US Energy Information Administration that released a report that projected that world energy consumption is projected to increase approximately 57% from the year 2004 to 2030. And while energy consumption and prices continue to rise, the true cost of using energy are even higher when we consider its impacts not only on climate change, but on future generations. The sad thing is, is that most Americans know how fuel efficient their automobiles are, but very few understand how much energy buildings consume. ASHRAE is working to change this in a variety of ways. We're developing significant improvements in the minimum energy efficiency requirements in ASHRAE Standard 90.1, which serves as the basis for the model US Energy Code for Buildings today. We're providing advanced energy design guidance through special publications, working with partners like the United States Green Building Council, and trying to get this information out to the marketplace as free resources so not only building owners, but building designers, architects, engineers, and consumers understand what the possibilities are to build more efficient buildings than what the minimum code requires today. We're also in the process of developing a building energy label that will provide building owners and occupants with a standard energy metric that can be easily compared across different building types. It's providing these minimum code requirements and above code requirements is really what's critical to provide improved energy efficiency in buildings in the United States. We must continue on the path of our nation's buildings to be more efficient, but it's going to require a significant commitment from all the stakeholders. I offer the following recommendations to ensure that we meet future requirements and demands placed on our buildings. We really do need to adequately fund the federal agencies to advance the development and enforcement of energy standards guidelines, and technologies. We should support research and development necessary for the development and deployment of technologies necessary to achieve our nation's energy goals as we move forward. 
This includes technologies that are going to be envisioned under the Net Zero Energy Commercial Building Initiative that was established in the Energy Independence and Security Act of late last year. Additionally, sufficient investment is going to need to be made in research and development for renewable energy technologies as we strive for net zero carbon buildings and net zero energy buildings. We also need to enact policies and encourage individuals and businesses to implement energy efficient technologies and practices that go beyond the minimum requirements that are required by the building energy codes today. This includes the commercial building tax deduction and setting realistic depreciation schedules for heating, ventilating, and air conditioning equipment, which are currently set at 39 years. We need to continue to support the utilization of voluntary consensus standards and regulation and codes as required by the National Technology Transfer and Advancement Act. If you could uh, summarize, please. Yes. Uh, we must apply our knowledge and experience to really provide effective, practical, and innovative solutions as we try to transform the U.S. built environment to green buildings. It's been an honor to testify before the committee, and I welcome any questions that you may have.